For most statistical tests that are parametric tests, there is an alternate test that is suitable for the same kind of data called a non-parametric test. A non-parametric test basically is a test that you use for data that are not normally distributed or who, that don't meet the typical requirements for parametric tests. In the case of our data, it was a bit sketchy because our blue data, even with the transformation, wasn't exactly normal. It was still significantly different from normal. So if we don't feel comfortable with that, we can use a non-parametric alternative. The non-parametric alternative to the t-test of means is the Wilcoxon rank sum test, also sometimes known as the Mann-Whitney U test. So those two names are sort of put together in the name Wilcoxon, Mann, Whitney, or M WMW test. The WMW test tests whether the distributions of the two groups are different. So it doesn't actually test whether the means are different. It tests whether the distributions are different. And so if they have different means, then they will have different distributions. However, it is also possible for them to have different, uh, different distributions due to other differences besides difference in mean. For example, they could be leptokurtic or some other kind of weird uh, disruption in the shape of the curve that makes it not be normal. The function that we use to do a WMW test is called Wilcox, that's short for Wilcoxon, Wilcox.test, and then we use the typical format of the dependent variable, a tilde, and then the independent variable. It will be relatively simple for us to do the Wilcoxon test. We just do Wilcox.test, and the tibble or data frame that we're going to use is this ERG factor, the one where we turned color into a factor, but otherwise left the data the same without doing the transformation that we did in this step here. So we can use the ERG factor tibble to do the test. Let's go ahead and run the test. We see the results are significant. And we get a warning message here. This warning message we can just ignore because this isn't really a problem for us. So that worked out well for us. The fact that the blue data wasn't completely normally distributed meant that we could try this other test and the other test was uh, highly significant. So the non-parametric test basically solved the problem if we had any qualms with using the parametric test. If that's great, like, and non-parametric tests are so great, why don't we just use them all the time and skip parametric tests? Well, if we compare the results of the same data using the parametric test and the non-parametric test, we can see that although the non-parametric test was highly significant with 10 to the minus 9 for a p value, the t-test was even more significant at 10 to the minus 12. This pattern is not a coincidence. In fact, as a general principle, non-parametric tests always have less statistical power than the parametric test that is usable with a equivalent sort of data. In this case, uh, it didn't make any difference because they were both highly significant. But in some cases, it may just be the difference may be enough to push you over the line. The parametric test might give you a p-value of 0 0.04, and the non-parametric test might be, say, 0 0.08 or something like that and not be significant. So is it cheating to say that let's use the, the test that gives us the best result? We're not actually doing anything wrong. We're simply making the best use of the information that is in the data that we have. When you do a non-parametric test, a lot of times you're throwing information out. In the case of the WMW test, instead of using the actual values of the data, we're using the ranks. In other words, the order, uh, if we put each of the values in order. So we're losing all of the magnitude information 
for each of the data items. That's actually quite a bit of data loss. And that data loss is what results in us having less statistical power. So if the two groups are truly different from each other, then increasing the statistical power helps us detect that difference if it's there. It does. It, we're not cheating and somehow making them more different by doing a better test. So you should always do the best test that you can, the one with the greatest power. Now, there are circumstances where your transformation might make the data normal, but then when you run the test for homogeneity of variance, the variances could turn out to be unequal. You may have noticed that when we ran the t-test, one of the arguments was that the variances were equal. There is an alternative to the test that you can run a t-test for unequal variances. And that still is a parametric test. So rather than giving up the ship and going to a non-parametric test like WMW, you could use the t-test of means for unequal variances that would still be a parametric test and you'd still get that boost in statistical power.